Okay, and go. Hello, and welcome to yet another episode of How I Spent the Apocalypse, filmed here on Castle Farms, which is what we call our farm. As you know, my name is Selena Rosen, and uh, I've been mostly in quarantine this entire time. The first week of the plague, I went out, and if you'll pan around Lynn so they can see, and bought about a three to four month supply of feed. As you can see, we don't have nearly as many bags. We probably have a month's let worth left, okay? I also wanna say that what you're seeing now is inside my big shop. When we bought this place, it was covered in garbage and trash. This building was literally stacked four foot high with trash. And the nicest thing that the realtor could tell me about this building was that it would probably only cost me a couple of hundred dollars to have it bulldozed. The place that we live in, which you've seen little pieces and parts of, was so horrific, in fact, that it was about to be condemned. And this is a rural area. Okay, so why did I go out and buy so much feed? Why did I go out and buy $500 worth of hardware? Because I knew where we live. We live in the land of we don't believe in the plague. The plague is a hoax. We live in the land of there is no climate change. We periodically get blown away in tornadoes and hail the size of baseballs falls. No climate change. But they do believe in angels and the Bigfoot. So there is that. So venturing out at this time in a land where no one has masked up, ever. No one is social distancing. And most of the churches have been open this entire time. Our numbers in this state currently, I'm not going to tell you what state I live in because I don't want you writing me hate mail or showing up at my doorstep. The state where we currently live in, our numbers of confirmed cases is doubling weekly. And yet we're completely open at this point. Okay, so we are doing our best to neither get the virus or spread the virus. But unless you are literally willing to separate yourself completely from your loved ones, chances are at some point you're going to come into contact with somebody who's come into contact with someone. And so your chances go up. And I'm not going to say that we're not gonna get infected because that would be really stupid. But in the meantime, I'm gonna keep talking to you guys. So if you follow me, I'm about to introduce you to our other chicken yard. We have a bunch of work that needs to be done. As you can see in the back of our shop is where we keep our freezer. Now, the old freezer died. And when the old freezer died, the place we normally keep our feed is in the old freezer. This is because it's airtight. Mice can't get in it. Bugs can't get in it. So I also have feet in there. So that's where we are. Okay. So walk this way. I put this door in here so that I could get into the chicken yard. And I built all this stuff out here. I built this. I added four foot on here and uh, built. This is where the chickens nest. Okay. And then you come on out. This is the chickens. This is what I use to water the chickens. You can see it's just a piece of guttering that I put on here that runs down into the barrel. And then I can just turn the barrel on, put, turn the barrel off. It's covered in screen that keeps mosquitoes out, keeps debris out of the barrel. That's what I use to water the chickens and the rabbits. Here's the rabbit tree. We have a small rabbit, rabbit tree, because we don't actually eat the rabbits. We raise them for shit because they have amazing shit for your garden. Um, and they will eat and shit all the time. That's what rabbits do. They eat and they shit. Okay, this is our chicken house. I built this out of scavenged block that was actually, remember I said this whole place was stacked in trash and garbage? Well, part of the garbage was these blocks. So I built this, um, and if you can come over here, Lynn, you can see the roosts are in here. The nest boxes are over there. The roosts are over here. And if you look, you'll see this bottle wall. 
Now this bottle wall right now, pan up at the trees. You can see that the trees right now, that bottle wall is in complete shade. So it's not letting any light in and it's not making it hot in there. But in the winter time, when the leaves are off the tree, the sun, this is southern exposure, the sun hits this bottle wall and heat goes in and goes out the neck of the bottles and actually heats this area. And that along with tricking them with a, uh, a light bulb makes my hens lay all year. They don't lay a lot in the winter, but they still lay. These are some little pullets we've got raising off back here, but we're getting ready to get, uh, we hope, we're not counting our chickens before they hatch, but my son's got a bunch of, my son the genius, yeah, my son the genius has a bunch of eggs in his incubator that he got from us, and so we're gonna split the chicks half and half with whatever we get, so hopefully they all hatch and we wind up with a bunch of chicks. So, what I want to tell you today is that everybody, when they come to see our place, they go, wow, you're so lucky. You're lucky to have this garden and you're lucky to have all these animals and I wish I had all this. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Most of them have no freaking idea what it takes to keep a place like this up. And little animals, Little animals do many horrific, stupid things. They tear shit up you didn't know you had. They eat crap you didn't want them to eat. Let a goat get out. You can have a pasture full of stuff you wanted the goat to eat. They won't touch it. Let them get out. They'll eat the one thing you don't want them to eat every damn time. Chickens, they're doing fine. Then all of a sudden they're all dead. It's buffalo gnats or it's something like that. You're constantly, constantly, constantly have to stay on top of everything. And the animals are actually less work and less time consuming than the garden. Okay, so like I said, I got my nest boxes in there. Zeb, go on in there and see if we got any eggs. Don't mess with the hens if they're on the nest. Go see if we've got any eggs. Okay, Zeb's gonna go see if we got any eggs today. I think, I, I, I think they're still laying today. I already got three eggs today. Yeah, I use light bulbs for nest eggs because then the snakes don't run off with them. Otherwise, your snakes will sometimes, snakes and coons, a coon stole the nest egg at the other place. Okay, so here's the thing about animals. Can you get a film? Okay, now, they have a perfectly nice house, but about six chickens have decided to nest in here. And because of that, there's a thick layer of shit here that you have to walk in when you go, and I already cleaned part of it up today, but you have to walk in every single time you go to get eggs. Now these barrels are for compost. I put anything in there from dead animals I pick up on the road to animals that die here to the guts when I butcher something. I put them in the barrels with the shit. And then the chickens stir my compost for me. If you can show, this is the one I'm currently filling. And as you can see, it's just rough stuff. This is one that's ready to be taken to the garden. You can see that I put, an, put bones in there from animals I've butchered. I put the carcass in there, but you can see this is just dirt now. So I can take that and use it anywhere in my yard or anywhere in my garden. And these are all composting bins that the chickens help me maintain. No maggots, because the chickens love to eat maggots. So they will dig in here and eat all the maggots. And then you have this beautiful compost. Usually takes about a year. Once you fill it, it usually takes about a year for it to turn into that. But as you can see, I have many barrels. All right. so. Like I said, people think they want animals. They don't know they do things like shit and piss and die. By the time you get really love an animal, the sun bitch will up and die. And you're like, how did that happen? A simple thing like getting ready for chicks becomes a job. Turn around, Lynn. Okay, so this 
is basically my brooder. You have to have a brooder for baby chicks. If baby chicks get cold, you think, well, it's hot today? No. They like it warmer than that. If they get cold, you're going to lose them. Why is this plastic on here? Because my stupid, remember I said chickens and animals will do stupid shit? They have a beautiful hen house, stays warm all winter. They've been nesting in there, which I don't want them to do, but no big deal. But we have one who has decided that they want to sleep on top of the brooder. And so they shit everywhere. And then you wind up having to clean up the shit, which is what I'm going to have to do before I can use my brooder. Now, how am I going to stop her from nesting up here at night? I'm going to have to come and get her and move her. Welcome to animal ownership. As you can see, that's what, oh, and she laid an egg up there. Why? I don't know. It's a stupid ass chicken thing. That's what they do. They make your lives a living hell. So anyway, here's how the brooder works. Okay, so this was very simple. I had an old rabbit hutch that I made and the chicks grow in certain stages. So in certain stages, you do certain things. Okay, so when they're very little, they stay in this compartment where you can see yet some more chicken shit. That's with the little plastic on top of it. She still managed to get chicken shit in there. Now, how will I get all that chicken shit out of there? I will tell you how, with my shop vac. I'm not gonna show you that though, cause that's boring. Okay, so this is the chicken, this is the brooder, okay? This one's really nice. It's got a bottom in it because they can't have any drafts. So the, the, this actually comes down and I can knock it off and clean it. Um, but that way, and then I can put it back up and that keeps them from getting a draft. But as you can see, there's wire mesh in the bottom. So the shit falls through unless a big hen shits on top of it because you can see it's a little bitty chicken house thing. So I'm going to clean all that up. Here's the light bulb. This is the most important part of this part of the brooder. The, bur the little chickens have to stay warm. So they basically see the little door down here. They can go in there, that's their warming station. Their food will go out here. Now, in a couple of weeks when they start to put on fe feathers, I will open, see that little door there closes. Okay, it's very tight right now. But anyway, that little door closes. When they get ready, I will flip that little door back up. And then they will grow off in here for a while. When they get too big for this pen, I will move them here. So this is my brooder. All right, so what have we learned today? Animals are assholes. They don't care about you. They just want to make your life a living hell. And yet, without them, you don't have a farm. Hey, Zebo, come yeah. here. Would you like to tell them that you have a website? Or what is it, a YouTube channel? Um, I have a YouTube channel called the Wiz Zeb, if you would like to check it out, I do Lego reviews and video game reviews, so check it out. What the hell? That's channel. nothing to do with farming. Yeah, it has nothing to do with farming. You asked me to plug my channel. Oh, what, okay. What there there you go. Time? All right. Well, there that. you go. There you have it. You know why he does that stuff? He's tired of putting up with animals because they're assholes. Thank <laughs> you and goodbye. <laughs>